Great to have you here. Welcome uh, in our uh, small brewery. As you can see, we're in a tiny, small space here, and uh, it's an, actually an old sheep shed. Uh, the sheep aren't here anymore, but um, we took it over, um, put a small brewery inside it. Um, we're on the grounds of a restaurant that's been going on for uh, four generations now, so since 1902. Um, the restaurant is actually at the junction of uh, two canals. You have the Damse Vaart, who's going from Bruges to Sluis, and then you have the Stenker and the Blink, who crosses the canal. Where the canals meet, the Damse Vaart goes into a siphon underneath the two other canals. And that's why it's called the, the siphon, siphon brew, brewing. Um, and the restaurant's been here always. Um, there's been a, a place where uh, for fishermen, I uh, used to go for a drink, eat some small sandwiches, and it grew out to uh, one of the most famous restaurants here in the, the region, famous for its eel, hence the, the logo of the, the S. Um, and yeah. And, and now famous for the beers. Ah, now <laughs> famous for the beers. Uh, when did you start and what was the reason for starting Siphon? Uh, well, we started back in 2016. Um, with a smaller setup than we have today, uh, we started with six uh, 500 liter tanks and a 500 liter brew kit. Um, now we have three extra 10 hectoliter tanks, so we almost doubled capacity since then. Um, and the reason was in the beginning to brew beer for the restaurant, but I think after a year we became bigger and more known to people in the region and even outside the region we did a few festivals and things b became bigger than we ever expected and that's where we are today what's your production capacity right now what, what is your monthly output or let's say your yearly output even pre-covid oh, it's <laughs> pre-covid yeah we did about i think 600 to 650 hectoliters a year a year and, and that's uh, what we expected for this year, but of course it's a lot what, less. What? How many different brews? I've tried all your brews. You know, I love the Cassandra. I love. Uh, well, we have we have uh, some more regular beers. We have a few seasonals, um, but that's something we are now m maybe change a little bit. We might s make our beers more available. Because people are liking uh, 1902, which is our triple, for instance, which is a, we put on the market as a spring beer. But people are asking for our triple all year round. So um, those are the things we are now, during this COVID period, we are rediscussing things a little bit. Um, so for next year, we'll probably have around seven or eight beers all year round available, which is uh, Cassandra, you just mentioned, is Domination, is our IPA, which is our best selling beer, I guess. Blackship. And then we have Lieve, which is uh, Kölsch, very easy drinking. And then we have um, uh, Zwalu, which was currently our summer beer, which is a 3.3% um, session IPA. We have Tronk, which is a quad with vanilla and orange. And we have 1902 triple with honey and lavender and uh, that's so more seven seven beers we have our whole house beer in the restaurant which is the beer we it all started with for us it's a blinker it's a saison but that's just for the restaurant yeah which leaves us some space to do some experimental beers and no. to have some stuff fun collaborations as well is that what you like doing is it the philosophy behind well, what is it you started just to supply beer to a famous restaurant, but uh, obviously grew into something bigger as people like me and other people around started hearing about you and you started attending festivals and showing mm. up. Uh, and before there was more people involved, uh, what happened? Yeah, so I, actually I joined the brewery about two years, two years and a half ago. Before that I, I used to work at another brewery, De Ranke, and um, we I'm actually from Bruges, so I was born and raised here in Bruges, and we've met um, in London at a beer festival. And uh, when they, they told me, like, uh, we have a small brewery in Damme, I, I didn't believe them at first, <laughs> because Damme, I, I mean, it's really close to Bruges. 
and then they said like yeah we're growing and, and it's going well and uh, and then they, they came to me and said that yeah, you should join and um, yeah started exporting more and more um, and then reaching maximum capacity here so we're uh, as you can see we don't have a lot of spare space here left and everything is uh, a bit scattered we have uh, our bottles over there we have a warm room over there our finished products are in another place so um, yeah and then just things recently, yeah things become a little bit too big or became a little bit too big just before well about a year ago um, also for the restaurant that's when they decided that um, for them it was it started as a, as a small side project and it became like a real big thing so they decided to um, uh, to, to focus more. focus more on the restaurant, so that's their main their main business, um, and we took over the brewery. So we were before with three, uh, Brandon from Belgium's Mark was part of it, but he decided to um, to uh, focus on his own writing stuff, and he's working as a uh, beer journalist, and that's why we decided to take it on and do things together, and now. We're looking for a new location, preferably in Bruges, where we can, like Matthias said, put everything together, our products, our um, uh, um, ingredients, oh, our yeah, finished products, order. everything all together. And preferably a place where we can uh, invite people, have food and drinks at that location, like a real group nice, up. Nice interactions with the uh, yeah. people you're serving your beer to. Yeah, you've been out of here, out here for the ordinary beer nerd to make the trek, I guess. Yeah, but and so you miss that contact. That yeah. you, a lot of the breweries, yeah. like you know, absolutely, the brewery, a lot of them have their own bar that they yep. love, like yeah. Hermitage and all those. They yep. love interacting with uh, the people who drink their beer. Yeah, and I guess that's what you kind of miss, or what? yeah. Well, although there, we still have a lot of people coming coming over. We're in Dama. It's really it's not that easy to to get here by public transport, for example. Uh, but still we get some visitors um, we actually get quite a lot with the birthday parties every year oh. um, but it it's i think i was born in bruges and i think bruges has a, a lot of potential for craft beer uh, there's a lot of uh, beer to a big beer tourism mm -hmm. scene people come to bruges drink beers at uh, uh, all the, the the different bars and, and the whole mom brewery there uh, that you have in the city center but i think for a craft beer bar in bruges that would be uh, the group up would be would fit in right and uh, not only for the tourists but also like we want to be something for the, the for the people from Bruges like have a, a local community also uh, coming to the pub not just tourists because yeah. like in this period okay now the bars are closed but just a few months ago bars were open but there were no tourists in Bruges so you need to have like a, a base of local, local people that still come to your pub and what what is your market? Is it really Belgium, or has it, so far uh, has it been pre-COVID? Was it, or are we getting more international? Um, more international, but it's it was fifty fifty, I guess. Um, a little bit more domestic market, um, but yeah, the beers that we make are not are a little bit in a niche market. So we we mostly do like bitter or specialty beers. Um, we try to do beers with a twist. Um, we do brew very traditional Belgian styles, like triple or quadruple, but then we try to add some twists, some like uh, vanilla orange in the quad, or uh, lavender and honey in the triple. Um, otherwise, we also do beers that are not that common, well, become more and more common, of course, in the Belgian market, but like four or five years ago, IPAs especially like our IPA, which is quite a classical IPA, um, was not that common here. People thought, well, what's, that's very bitter beer, especially for the local people around here. And they came to the restaurant, used to drink in pinches. Uh, domination was a discovery for a lot of people. So that's what we try to do to, let's say, or in the beginning we said we want to educate the Belgian beer drinker. Um, I think that's maybe still a little bit the case, but I think
think uh, the market is also changing. A lot of people are now uh, more and more getting into craft beer. And what have you done now at uh, COVID? What's what's your strategy? Uh, have <laughs> you haven't opened up an e-shop, or have you? And working on that. We're working. <laughs> we're actually working on that. Yeah. So we, um, with COVID, it, it became very clear that our biggest market was in the Horika. Um, so we're in a lot of uh, specialty beer bars, restaurants, gastronomical restaurants. Um, but now we. we we understood it was important, more important than ever for us to, to shift to uh, some other markets to make sure we're in, in some smaller stores, uh, uh, e-commerce. Um, so we decided to start building our uh, web shop. We work with a lot of uh, beer distributors um, who, who support us on a regular basis, who know the beers that we make and who, who all, all, all always been doing a really good job in uh, supporting and um, getting our beer to the people and to the bars well, today we're still a little bit in like a in between phase taking over the brewery now yeah. it's just mm -hmm. the two of you are the partners yeah. yes uh, what's your dream of this becoming do you hope to explode and become fabulously <laughs> wealthy off beer or do you want to keep the craft spirit or where do you go i think keeping the craft spirit is very important to us i think uh, some Local connection would be nice to sell a little bit more beer. We call it uh, Ronte Karketoren. It's like around the church. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to have our beers in Italy and in Japan, but it's also nice to have your beers locally and set up some local uh, collabs with um, yeah, me dollar people, uh, have, have people uh, discussing beers with you, um, do collabs with a coffee roaster, for example, that we did before. Um, I think that would be nice. And just make sure we, we can just make a living on, out of doing something we really like. Currently, are you both full time at the brewery, or is it that you? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so this yeah. is your life. <laughs> this uh, is our life. Now it's a little bit less busy than it was before, but like half a year ago was uh, was a full day job. Yeah. yeah. And what can beer lovers expect out of Siphon coming forward in terms, you know, after COVID, whatever your dream, it, is it more of the same type of beers or are you going to keep working on the brews you have right now and make them, I guess, better or? That's always, working on quality is, is one thing, we always work on quality. But I think once we find a new location, start a brew pub, we have our, well, our core beers always available. And at that point, it's 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 our also our, our target to to do really nice experiments. Uh, I don't know what, but f can go from from very bitter to sour to I don't I don't know what. I, I, we're open for everything. Uh, nice collapse, like Matthias said. It's it's uh, and make sure our, our core range keeps keeps consistent. Yeah, keep everything consistent. That's right? very important. So if we change, even fun. if we change location, make sure everything. Yeah. So you're still having fun? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. <laughs>